should have been uh, 2011 or 2012, something like that. So, um, yeah, in any case, 10 or 11 years ago, I was um, about to join the Masonic craft. I went to the ceremony of my initiation. And right after that, the next day I went to school, I went to university and I have met my friend uh, Ahmed and um, I told him all about it, I told him about the ceremony, I told him everything, I explained to him about the working tools and stuff and Ahmed goes to me like, mate, what are you doing to yourself? Aren't they supposed to be evil, these guys? And I said, nah. No, no way, man, no. I mean, the whole language, the archetypes, the archetypal language that they're using, the, the ceremony, there's nothing evil about these guys, I said to myself. Um, the, I mean, the, the language is very appealing, the symbolism is appealing, it, it, it does appeal to the rational person within us, right? It, it appeals to... Uh, the, the 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 rational Christian who is bent towards doing good to other people. That's 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 what it meant to me. It turned out Ahmed was right. I mean Ahmed is is Ahmed is not a silly guy, and actually as a as a person he's um he he's he's an en en encyclopedia on two feet on, on two legs. Okay, he's he's a walking encyclopedia, uh, Mr. Mr. Ahmed. So, yeah. Um, but enough about that. I'm about to revisit. I am about to revisit the post that I made on the sixth of September, two thousand and twenty-one. For the very very small detail that the post has disappeared. This post has disappeared from my uh, from my YouTube records, and uh, it has disappeared from my um, for, from from my uh, from my hot flash drives at home too. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm not blaming YouTube or anything. I'm not I'm not I'm not going to file for damages from YouTube on this one. Simply because um, th there's something on my end. I believe my account was hacked. In fact by somebody, possibly by somebody that I live with, that I, I don't I don't really know their real name. And therefore I am forced to revisit this topic. So, um, once again, 6th of September 2021, nobody, nobody important has, has in fact seen that this one. So I am in fact forced to recreate the, the post in question. Okay, so the post refers to uh, some medieval stuff. Okay. Now, uh, now uh, the greatest uh, the, the greatest name that I've ever heard of in medieval studies is this man, Umberto Eco. I think he passed away uh, before 2020. He may have passed away in 2018 or 2016. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, I'm I'm pretty sure he's not with us anymore. Um, very very intelligent man. Very very reliable intellectual. Okay. Uh, very intelligent. Very reliable. Very smart. I truly. I, I truly and surely recommend his work in hermeneutics, in, in semiotics, in the, the in general the theory of interpreting information that, that we may be able to extract from the past. And of course um, his Magnus Opus, The Name of the Rose, um, which is um, <clears throat> The Name of the Rose is a crime story in essence. We are... Um, it is set up in a in a medieval monastery, in which uh, we get some uh, some monks over there that are involved in doing some mischievous type of stuff with some some alchemy, some knowledge. Okay, so if I'm going to compare, um, for example, um, somebody like Paulo Coelho with Umberto Eco, I'd say 
I'd say Umberto Eco is is much much happier. Of course, they're not the same generation. Mr. Coelho is uh, a tad younger, I believe. Um, I think I think uh, Paulo Coelho in the Alchemist, he he has he he makes a few points over there. Uh, if if we're talking South American type of stuff, I'm I'm more uh, I'm, I'm I'm more bent towards the the, the Spanish writers like Marquez or uh, Mario Vargas Llosa. But uh, okay, Brazilian uh, the, the 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 Portuguese writer uh, Brazilian, of course, Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, Paulo Coelho, Paulo Coelho is, is is pretty pretty good too. Uh, though I find him a little bit, a, a, a tad, uh, how can I say, corny or cheesy. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, no, uh, The Alchemist by uh, Paulo Coelho is is also a, a huge, huge um, achievement for literature and, 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 and for uh, knowledge in general. And in the same, um, in the same ballpark, I'd say, uh, I would, I would, uh, uh, mention here uh, Patrick Suskind, Suskind, I believe it's a it's it's a dotted U, um, and 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 his his uh, his his most most his best known work, uh, the perfume. Okay, now that's also very very good, very heavy medieval type of stuff. Whereas uh, okay, so medieval Europe, right? Um, the, the, the stuff that Suskin wrote about is set up in medieval Europe. Uh, Umberto Eco writes about med medieval Europe too. Uh, whereas, whereas uh, of course, we must compare apples with apples here. Uh, so, it, it, it is incorrect to compare uh, Paulo Coelho with Umberto Eco or Patrick Suskin because, well, the alchemist is set up in the Middle East somewhere if, if if i am if i am to be correct on this one i i believe from from memory i read it when i was very very young um and never returning to it whereas uh, other writers uh, uh, representatives of the south american boom uh, like uh, liosa or marquez um well they are um, the, 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 they are set up in the, their setting usually in their works is South America. So, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know. I think Paulo Coelho is 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 worth your time um, and and money. I mean, books are not that expensive these days, and they are they are a good investment basically. Uh, cool. So. Um, <clears throat> Coming back to medievalism, so this is the, the main man for medieval Europe, the heavyweight, okay? I recommend his entire corpus of writings, okay? He is simply outstanding. I think he was, he was associated to the Mafia. Uh, but I do believe he was associated to the Mafia, Umberto Eco, uh, but uh, okay. He never wrote about uh, the Cosa Nostra or anything like that. Uh, he was he was just a very very smart, very intelligent man. May he rest in peace. Uh, and he 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 spent his life doing good. Okay, it, his life was a, was a life well spent. Okay, I'm 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 entirely filled with admiration for Umberto Eco. Now let's let's just uh, dig into the stuff that I wanted to tell you about. Okay, so this is the doppelganger phenomenon. Okay, there exists. Okay, um, I did I did come to this conclusion myself uh, using a combinatorial mathematics uh, type of argument. Okay, uh, considering the, the 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 considering the features that human beings do exhibit. Okay. And considering the worldwide population, well, you we will come to the conclusion that if we if we think carefully about this point, this is scientific and it can be proved. It can be proved scientifically, though, though I'm not going to 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 
to uh, waste my time with giving you the proof. Okay, there exist people that look exactly like each other. They, they look and sound exactly like each other, and we um, this is provable scientifically, mathematically, um, through arguments that have to do with the pigeonhole principle and maybe elements from human genetics, okay? So that's about it. We can have we can find references in medieval literature to this phenomenon, um, namely medieval lords or med med medieval princes, um, medieval rulers, knights, okay, kings. They 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 sometimes employed perfect lookalikes whenever they they thought they 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 would they are going to be they are in danger or they are going to be assassinated so they would send their lookalike uh to to have a speech or a meeting or 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 anything of that kind okay so this is well known since at least the the, the 1400s in europe the the, the the this phenomenon the the the, the doppelganger phenomenon now let, let me jump to to something um, let me jump to something uh, somewhat different there exists a story that goes goes around in Vienna that basically says that coffee okay coffee was introduced in in the western world in well in western europe in particular through uh, through the crusades basically okay there was a battle somewhere, and uh, the, the the Crusaders uh, presumably okay. The story goes that the Crusaders won, yet um, they, uh, they 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 brought with them uh, some uh, some some bags of coffee that was roasted, and uh, they they brought it back to Europe, and uh, they discovered the beneficial qualities of coffee. Okay, so uh, hmm, that that that. When I heard that story, I've read that story when I was in Vienna for about eight months or so, I realized that this story is particularly interesting, okay? So, who um, in, in the battle between the Crusaders, okay, in, in, in the battles between the Crusaders and the Presumably the Ottoman Empire, though there could have been other mischievous forces back then. Who won, really? Who won? Who won those battles? Really? I mean, um, I, I've, I've, I've read a few a few commentaries on the topic, and as far uh, the, the official history goes, like the Ottomans stopped at the gates of Vienna. Okay, that that is the official story okay so the the middle eastern uh, okay so the near eastern and the middle eastern influences on western culture are not that high okay so basically the ottomans stopped once or twice i'm not sure at the gates of vienna okay yet Let's let let's get to the main uh, to 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 the main point that I wanted to make here. Let's let, let let us look at this one. Look, this one this one is called the beheading of John the Baptist, and it's um, um, it is uh, authored by Caravaggio, okay, a famous Italian uh, medieval painter, and. Um, Okay, so this on, on face value, this is the beheading of John the Baptist, right? But if we look on the background carefully, okay, we look on the background, that is not the Middle East, okay? That building is medieval Italy. That 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 looks a lot like European architecture, okay? So um, we get a few prisoners, okay? So presumably after after a battle with uh, the Ottomans, right? We get we get a few prisoners um, that managed to escape prison with the with some cooperation from inside. Okay, May, mainly with uh, the cooperation of, of of the two ladies that 
um, that we are able to, we are able to see painted here. Okay. Um, one uh, the, the the man the man that holds John uh, the John the Baptist. Okay, so, okay, so John the Baptist is actually a prison guard. He's either a prison guard or a man of authority in 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 the story that Caravaggio paints here. And the man that holds his head is uh, basically swapping roles with him. Okay, so. Um, uh, he he takes his clothes and 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 assumes his identity. Okay, so he assumes the the prison guard's identity, and that is basically how the uh, thugs, the thugs, the hermetists, satanists, um, wizards, witches, or whatever whatever you you wish. Whatever one one wishes to call them, if there exists a name for those, this is how they take over the Vatican, and more more importantly, this is how they take over Malta. Okay, and uh, well, that's about it in this topic. So this is the message that Caravaggio sent to us from the dark ages in Europe the, basically if, if you read philosophy we, we know we know a great deal about what happened in antiquity we we know about Socrates Plato Aristotle we know about the pre-socratics uh, but we know we know very little about what happened in the in in the dark ages that that I mean that's why they call it dark ages in Europe we know very, very little about what happened in the Dark Ages. Okay. Uh, now coming up, come coming back to okay. Fast forwarding a few centuries or so, we come back to the present time. Look at these three people. Okay, in my book, that this, what we see here, is Middle Eastern features. And what we see here is Middle Eastern features. And what we see here is Middle Eastern features. Okay? Doppelgangers. What we see on this three people are, in fact, Middle Eastern features. Okay? Don't, don't, uh, don't give me any bullshit. Just, just get, get on your uh, face recognition, artificial intelligence, and you will see this is Middle Eastern. Okay, there may be doppelgangers of real people, people that did exist, but, uh, well, however, in my books, in, in my book, according to my understanding, these features, the facial features, are in fact. Middle Eastern. Thanks for your attention on this one. And I, I hope I hope this time my message gets read properly. Thanks.